Well, hello, 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 everybody. This is Luigi on the go once again. And we're going throughout the world. We've been to Africa, China, Tunisia, France, uh, Haiti, Ecuador. And now we're going in Jamaica, but the Canadian West of Canada version with somebody from the Jamaican Association of Calgary. And we're here today with uh, somebody that I uh, saw um, I saw on Facebook recently, and I, it just rang a bell. And I was like, hey, it's true. I forgot about Jamaican people in Calgary. So I had the chance to see the video of uh, the president, one of the videos of the president a couple of days a couple of days ago and now we're sitting with him and we're going to discuss about jamaicans in the west of canada how you doing sir hey i'm pretty good luigi how are you i'm wonderful so people i would like to present to you the president of uh, the jamaican association of calgary that's how it is uh, jamaican canadian association alberta alberta okay J-C-A-A. donovan Simon. correct <laughs> so how's everything for you uh, uh, in calgary right now you know what? So far, so good. Uh, today, Calgary is pretty pretty warm. I think we got to 20 degrees, so everybody's, uh-huh. you know, feeling good. And uh, overall, I think generally we're we're doing okay out west. Okay, okay. So um, now we in uh, mid May. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys were shut down like us in Montreal, like mid March also, I guess, right? Yes. I mean the COVID nineteen. Uh, response started in March. I know for my company, we started our uh, lockdown uh, near the end of March, and I mean we're still we're still in partial lockdown. Mm-hmm. So we're just starting to open up. I think starting on the 14th of May, the provincial government implemented the the reopening plan, which is in three phases. At least for Calgary, it's in three phases. In three phases. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it starts off on the 14th with the golf courses and a couple of other uh, entities, small businesses, with restrictions in terms of the number of people and you know physical distancing. And then I think it goes into larger organizations, mm-hmm. workplaces, dental offices, barber shops, you know, aesthetic shops, etc. Mm-hmm. And then the third phase I think is to look at schools and other larger institutions, right? Uh, so that's kind of the plan that the provincial government has laid out as it relates to reopening Alberta. Okay. So uh, um, uh, um, when it, you're talking about being the president of the, uh, the Jamaican Association, do you guys come, uh, do you guys support some individuals or families during the, this whole pandemic situation in Calgary? Yeah, we've, we've done a number of things uh, during the pandemic. I mean, first of all, one of the things we try to do, at least for our members and our communities, is to, is to offer assistance, especially for seniors, because initially, uh, you know, there was on, you know, we were unsure as to the impact it would have on them. So we offered a service where mm-hmm. we could pick them up, drop them off, you know, get their medic- medicines, get their groceries and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, as an association, we also have a benevolent fund so cases of hardship that were brought to us, we, we try to support uh, in the best way we can mm-hmm. through that particular fund and or pointing them to services that were available either locally or through the federal government and assisting people with uh, ensuring that they tap into, into those resources. And then what we've also tried to do is to be a, a source of information. Mm-hmm. So, you know, weekly we send out a newsletter and we've got a number of programs where we get people to understand the different things that are available to support them, but also to try to support people emotionally as they go through the different issues. You know, what are some of the steps that they can take in order to manage the circumstances that they're, that they're going through and to also make them know that even though we're physically distancing and social distancing and all the rest of it, that there was still a community available to support them. We're also in the process right now of planning a couple of post-COVID initiatives, okay. right? Okay. To ensure that, you know, when things get back to normal, mm-hmm. it's not going to be the same normal that people experienced in March. And, you know, we're thinking or we're planning up different ways of assisting the community through some of those programs. So, okay. you know, back to school, uh, you know, support during the summer, 
uh, things like that are, are, are under consideration right now. So, uh, I mean, I, I lived in Calgary for two years, but uh, that was uh, in 2015. Now with 2020, I did a lot of stuff, discovered the whole diversity in the mosaic of, I would say, at, between Edmonton and Alberta and, and Calgary. Now, what is the, the uh, population of Jamaican or Caribbean uh, in Calgary? Uh, you know, that's a good question and a tough question. Okay. Uh, we, we've never been able, at least not yet, to have a precise count on the Caribbean population here in Calgary. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the last federal census, however, did capture that information. So, you know, we're, we're waiting that report to, to see uh, what the demographic looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, that said, I use an estimate based on some information I have from other uh, nationalities like the Colombians and others uh, in this region. And I'm going to estimate in Calgary that we're possibly about uh, you know, nine to 10,000 uh, Jamaicans. And mm -hmm. if, you know, typically if you look at the Caribbean population, mm -hmm. the Jamaicans are usually somewhere about 50% of that population. Okay. So it would be reasonable to suggest that uh, the Caribbean population here in Calgary is possibly somewhere about 15,000. Right. And that's for second generations, because uh, Jamaicans have been and Caribbean people have been in Calgary from back in the 50s. Right. And back over, in the 50s? Back in the 50s. I've met, wow. uh, you know, Jamaicans who came here in the 50s. Uh -huh. uh, and, you know, we've had a, a steady stream uh -huh. of people migrating uh, first to the east. So Toronto, Montreal, then, right. you know, coming west through Winnipeg into into Calgary and Edmonton. But I just I just seen something here. Uh, I had an information I want to share with you because we mm -hmm. discussed it that and there's nothing specific specific, but you have it by language or so on in religion and so on or from uh, Caribbean descent. But I just find out here in Alberta when we talk about Black Canadian or Afro Canadian, French mm -hmm. Afro Canadian, I see there's a hundred and twenty nine thousand. Yeah, and that's in the whole Alberta. Yeah, and that's very possible because we've had a lot of migration from Africa. So, uh -huh. so you know, there's a lot of Francophone uh, people out of Africa coming into Alberta. And that population, I think, has continued to, to steadily grow, mm -hmm. right? So it, it, it would not surprise me uh, to see that type of number in Alberta. Right. Uh, a, lot, a lot of, especially in southern and northern Alberta, mm -hmm. where a lot of the, the African population tends to go uh, either for work or just for family. Yeah. How long you been in, in, in uh, Calgary? I have been in Calgary 20 years. 20 years? Wow. 20 years, man. <laughs> from from Jamaica or from Toronto, from Montreal? Direct, directly from Jamaica to Calgary. One one flight? Well, well no, I, I did stop in Toronto. But <laughs> okay, okay. But I, I came directly... I came directly from Jamaica to, to, to Calgary. Mm -hmm. When I left Jamaica, it was... I think it was 27 degrees above. We were having a cold front and a lot of rain. Mm -hmm. I got to Calgary and it was minus 20, a lot of snow on the ground. So, no, uh, no, big, no. big, big shift. But you know what? It, it's been a great ride. Yeah, I you know for having lived in uh, in uh, in uh, Calgary, I discovered I didn't even know that the the carnival, the Cavi Fest, Cavi Fest, as it exists for now over 35 years, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's interesting. Uh, like our association, the JCA, has been around for 40 years. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, and out of organizations like ours, because first there was a Caribbean association. Okay. And the Caribbean association uh, began this process of doing things like a festival and other things. I mean, I, I see I've tasted Jamaica on your monitor in the background. Yes. Taste of Jamaica has been going on for over 30 years, right? So, you know, it, it's just another form of expression that, you know, the Caribbean community here in Calgary has been doing and has consistently done. Mm -hmm. You know, 2019 was a fantastic year for Carafest. You know, we had great weather, great crowds, great entertainment. Uh, and it's just something that I think we've continued to, to build on over the years. I mean, we've had some lean years, so I... Yeah. Uh, you know, I'll acknowledge, you know, it's, it's not the easiest thing to, to manage, volunteer, run uh, organizations and activities. But, you know, some way, somehow we have found a way to sustain these activities over the years.
Yeah. So it's it's always the same parade going down 8th Avenue. I I, I think they That's call it Center Street, Street also. Uh, Stephen Avenue. Uh, Stephen, yeah, Stephen Avenue. Yeah. So it yeah, goes all so the way down to Centennial Park at the end there. That's it? Shaw, Shaw Millennium Park. Yeah, Shaw you, Millennium. Got, you, you got it, man. You know this. <laughs> I know where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> you know this. This is wonderful. So the diversity of uh, the Caribbean uh, nations, there's uh, Antigua, because I know Stooch. Stooch yeah. is from Antigua, you say, I know every, details. Every, everybody knows Stooch. Everybody <laughs> knows Stooch. He's, a, he's wonderful, he's, he's real dynamic. Oh, great guy, great guy, great DJ, by the way, great DJ. Yeah, I know that too. All right, good. I had the chance to, to uh, DJ at his restaurant. All right, good. A while back. I did, I, I, I did um, Haitian music night. Oh, that's the cool. Zouk and Compa night. Yeah, you can, you can ask too. I was the first one to try to do that in 2013, the winter 2013 and 14. I did it the winter summer. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I did, I did stuff. Uh, all right. So we have Antigua. We have Trinidad. I yep. guess is the second most popular or more popular than Jamaican. Yeah, I would say Trinidad for sure. Trinidad, huh? uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... So right now we've got a we've got something called the Caribbean Presidents Forum here in Calgary, okay. where the presidents uh, or the leadership of all the Caribbean uh, associations here meet regularly, looking at issues, planning events together. So we've got Antigua, we've got Trinidad and Tobago, we've got Saint Vincent and the Grenadines, there's mm -hmm. Barbados, there's Guyana, there's the Bahamas, there's Haiti, mm -hmm. there's Jamaica, there's Saint Lucia, there's Barbados. Uh, And we're also included in that are the organizers of the Caribbean Heritage Sports Day yes. and the Caribbean Community Council. They're the guys who put on CARIFEST. So that's 12 organizations that come together on a regular basis to, to plan different events, to plan activities in a collaborative way. Yeah, I had a chance when I when I participated to the uh, Olympic, Caribbean Olympic, what was it? The Sports Day, yeah, Caribbean Sports, Sports Day. Day. Yeah. I, I played uh, basketball for the Haitians. How could you do that, man? Huh? Well, uh, you know, I got to do something. <laughs> uh, okay, Jamaica possibly won, right? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> it's not important. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I mean, it's a great, it's a great initiative. Yeah, and I remember um, seeing Donovan Bailey. Yeah, Donovan Bailey was here yeah, that year as as our, our, our special guest. He mm -hmm. he actually did a seminar the night before, so the Friday night he did a seminar with the yeah. with the young people, and then on Saturday he was our principal marshal. Fantastic event, mm -hmm. you know. Lots of people came out, lots of youngsters, yeah. and and it's a good expression of Caribbean culture here in Calgary. Exactly. So I know also that the different. Jamaican Association throughout Canada are uniting together to come in hand to different uh, citizens or di people with a particular status in Canada. Can you explain that to me a little bit? Yeah, so it, it's, it's the Jamaican Canadian COVID-19 response uh, telethon. Okay. Right. And it, it started with the JCA Ontario mm -hmm. saying, hey, how do we raise some funds primarily to support international students? Because there are a number of Jamaican students studying in Canada who have been affected by this whole COVID-19 issue. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the presidents have reached out and it has been endorsed by, you know, the Jamaica Diaspora Council. It has been endorsed by a number of artists and dignitaries all across Canada. Mm -hmm. And there are artists from different places, so Calgary, Winnipeg, Oshawa, Montreal, Toronto, and Jamaica, who are you know wow. performing as part of this telethon to raise funds to support uh, primarily international students in this post-COVID time. You know they're going to go back to school in September. Lots of them won't have any summer jobs, so they won't be able to to you know manage their tuition and a number of other things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, So it's a collaborative effort all across Canada to, to support initially Jamaican students, international students uh, as a post-COVID uh, response activity. So the telethon is on the 30th of May. Okay. Uh, it's it's going to start at noon. It's Helping Hands and JC Ontario and all of our websites. We're going to start pushing out messages all across social media and all of that. Uh, I think we're starting today to promote Okay. Uh, the, 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 the telethon. So yeah, that's, that's one of the several things that as a collective, you know, we're, we're looking at doing. And what you'll see over the next little bit is more 
activity from a collective Jamaican association mm -hmm. uh, grouping all across Canada because more and more we're saying, hey, we, we need to connect, we need to support each other, we need to do things together. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And uh, and throughout that 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 project, I discovered uh, while talking to you, there's even a Jamaican association in Winnipeg. I was oh, like, yeah. oh, <laughs> you know, what? there's a Jamaican association everywhere. You know, there's <laughs> you know, there's one in Montreal. There's yes. one in Vancouver. There's one in Halifax. There's one in Edmonton. Uh, of course, you know, we are here in, in Calgary. There's Edmonton. Mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, the Jamaican associations have been steadily uh, performing their little duties all across the country. And mm -hmm. I think as we get together as, as a collective group over and over, or more and more, I should say, I think it'd be a good thing for, for the community overall. Yeah. Is the, uh, now we talk about the health and the support for the elderly and for the student. How about uh, business-wise, different entrepreneurs and different business for the Caribbean or the Afro-Canadian in general? Are, are they uh, uh, deeply impacted or some will recover, you think? Well, I, I, think, I think some are impacted. I think some, some will, will suffer. I think some will also make it through. Mm -hmm. uh, what I know here in Calgary is that there's, there's a little group called the Calgary Black Chambers, and they've been kind of trying to look at, uh, you know, what do we do for black businesses going forward? Okay. I know personally one of the things I've, I've you know, been consciously uh, looking at doing is, is buying locally more and supporting these businesses more. You know, I've always uh, tried to do that, but I think coming out of uh, this COVID crisis, there has to be a greater consciousness of how we support each other. We're, where do we spend our dollars, exactly. right, in order to ensure that we, we support the livelihood of, you know, other people in our community, right? So that, that's something, you know, we have a little town hall that we're going to have in a couple of weeks. We want to talk about stuff like that to see, you know, how can we make sure that everybody uh, comes out of, of this COVID crisis in the best way possible. Okay. Well, I'm happy to hear that. Um, I will make sure to put all those information in the description below, uh, mm -hmm. the Facebook, the website, uh, the YouTube. Uh, yeah. we, need to feed, we need to feed your YouTube. That's yeah, that's true. That's true. We need to feed that one. Well, I'm going to push you. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's true. <laughs> that's what we are. I mean, the reason I'm saying that, and I say that to a lot of people, because I realize that Facebook is one thing, but if you want to go mainstream and just if somebody tap Jamaica, uh, Jamaican, Calgary, they have better chance to find something on YouTube that's connected to Google. So that's right. why I think right. people in that technology right. sense. To totally agree with you. We'll make sure of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, what else do you want uh, people to know about uh, the West of Canada when it comes to Afro-Canadian, Caribbean-Canadian? What, what, what do you think people should know? Uh, you know what? I think there's a vibrant uh, Caribbean, Afro-Caribbean culture here. I know from the Jamaican, uh, you know, the JCA's perspective, we connect with our, our Afro-Caribbean groups all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think it's, it's important that people appreciate that uh, while the population is smaller, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that our culture is any less significant here. Uh, we get to participate in a range of activity and we are consulted or included uh, consistently at the different levels of government Mm -hmm. in the different cultural activities. Uh, there's great recognition of the value of cultural diversity, especially in Calgary. And therefore, there are numerous opportunities for us to showcase our culture, for us to participate and maintain and expose our identity to the community that we're a part of. And it's something that I, you know, I know we cherish as, as an association, mm -hmm. and we try as far as we can to pull all the other organizations along because I think that's critical that we maintain and expose and share our culture and identity uh, here uh, in Western Canada. Exactly. And I was, uh, like I was telling you earlier also, a lot of people don't know that about Calgary, but I talk about it in my conference because I do conference in schools, um, uh, jail, uh, community centers and all that. And I talk about John Ware. And John mm -hmm. Ware was a big time entrepreneur, a black, mm -hmm man right. that left the united states in yep. late 1800 yep long time ago, 125 yeah. years ago mm -hmm. and the first statue when you go on the stampede ground yep. is john ware yeah there you go yeah 
Yeah, so I know I'm always happy to transfer information like that. You know, I did all around the world. But I think West Canada for the people in the east of Canada, they need to more a little bit more and connect a little bit more, you know? Yeah, and I mean, you know, I totally, totally in support of that. I totally agree with you because, you know, I have conversations many times with people out in Ontario who, who don't understand and realize that there is a deep Jamaican, Caribbean, Afro-Caribbean roots here in, in, in West. Western Canada and, and doing many good things. Uh, you know, I think we're a recognizable part of the, you know, the cultural fabric of this part of Canada and continue to make solid contributions in different areas, right? And I think we'll, we'll continue to do even more, mm-hmm. right, as organizations like ours and, you know, the other, the other groups uh, maintain their presence in, in the community. Exactly. Well, Mr. Simon, thank you, Donovan for having this exchange with me. Um, where can we reach you again? Name of the website, phone number, something. Can you leave the information for the people? So oh, I can yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, so it's a pleasure, Luigi. Thanks for reaching out and thanks for connecting. Uh, our website is www.jcalberta.com. Uh, we are on Twitter at JCAlberta. We're on Instagram at JCAlberta. We're on Facebook at JCAlberta. So search any of the social media platforms and you'll find us, jump on our website and you get current information on what we do, our programs, our leadership and all the different things that we offer uh, within the community. It's a pleasure sharing and thanks for taking the time to, to connect with us. Well, the pleasure is all mine and I'll make sure also to follow up so I can share your uh, fundraiser on the 30th of May or 31st of May, right? May 30th, so yeah, the Jamaican Canadian COVID-19 response telethon yes so there it is ladies and gentlemen i was uh, was talking exchanging with the president of uh, the jamaican association of calgary the jamaican canadian association alberta jcaa you know who you are (laughs) (laughs) yeah but they'll find us once they put in jamaicans and calgary they'll find us they'll find you well thank you very much All right. Take care, Luigi. Best of luck. And I hope you're taking care of the family. Everybody's safe. Everybody is good. And you too. Stay safe. Wonderful.